What is going on YouTube? So come back today with my next NBA draft scouting report. So I will be doing Marquise Chris. He is a six foot nine, two hundred twenty five pound freshman out of the University of Washington. He's power forward and he's from Rancho Cordova, California. So get into some of his strengths. Uh, first one is he's an elite athlete at the floor. He's a great leaper. If I can let me see if I can pull up his vertical, but um, he's a guy that plays above the glass well, or above the rim well. Um, he gets after the ball extremely well on offense, which, considering his weakness defense or his weakness for defensive rebounding, um, again, not uh, some I'll elaborate into a little bit later, but it, it, it's something that. Is kind of surprising, but also a well or welcoming welcoming attribute at the same time. Um, I don't think vertical has been measured yet, but seven foot, um, seven foot standing reach or not seven foot standing reach, seven foot wingspan. Um, so, like I said, measurables aren't by any mean any means elite um, when it comes to height or wingspan. Not bad, also. Um, but when you take into account his speed, um, his quickness, his strength, his leaping ability, he is an elite athlete. Um, and he's a very welcoming presence if he can um, stay a little bit more composed on offense and defense. So second strength is he's a good shot blocker and rebounder. So, like I said, I think his shot blocking needs a little bit, or not his shot blocking, um, I think his rebounding needs a little bit of work on defense. Um, but still, average uh, right around eight rebounds per 40 minutes. Um, not, a, not a great, uh, not, not at a fantastic number, but also definitely not terrible. Um, shot blocking was 1.6, average 1.6 blocks per game, but only around 25 minutes per game. So, um, actually a welcoming part of his game that um, he can be able to be that shot blocker or that shot blocking type uh, power forward that's a very welcoming or welcoming presence on defense also average about 1.5 steals per 40 minutes um, which is again another good stat that you look for so uh, third strength is he's an ideal stretch for in today's NBA now obviously this means a couple things. One is he's got the speed to keep up with a fast paced transition. Uh, he's got good hands. Uh, he can definitely finish down low. Um, shoot, shot 53% last year um, and 35% from three. So he's got the three point ability and also um, he's just a good true shooter. Uh, he can post up. Um, he's actually a very good pick and pop uh, type player which um, with how many teams uh, run a pick and roll from the point. Um, it's a very valuable asset to have. And uh, I think his combinate or his skill set uh, brings him to be one of the highest upside players in this draft. So uh, get into his four strength, which he's extremely strong and physical. Um, at 225 pounds for six foot nine, that's um, the, the, that's a good frame. He, he, he's not a wide body, but he is strong. And he is aggressive and he got to the line about four times per game um, and for the amount that he had the ball in his hand that was pretty impressive like I said for only playing 25 minutes per game um, again the physic the physicality is good but you, you feel like he's got to stay a little bit more composed to use how to learn it a little bit better uh, especially on the defensive end of the floor um, his offensive polish needs a little bit of work but again that's something I will get into later so get into his weaknesses, and first one is foul trouble. This was a big problem. 4.1 fouls per 25 minutes, considering um, he probably would have been able to play 30 to 33 minutes per game if he wasn't averaging um, close to 8 fouls per 40. So, you know, you, you hope that's something that gets uh, cleaned up. Like I said, it just it, it, it's patience and composure and fundamentals on defense. Uh, he would do things like still reach for the ball, when he was already in foul trouble, he would still go for the reach in. He would still um, draw, or he would still uh, welcome contact on defense as well. Um, and he would still also try to do things like run through screens. It's, again, a problem that is fixable, but it's also one that you hope isn't a long term problem where um, he's a threat to foul out every single game. 
So his second weakness is positioning on defense. Now, I said this when I mentioned his strong rebounding skills. He's a very strong offensive rebounder because I feel like he doesn't think about it as much. But on defense, he tends to get boxed out a lot. Um, doesn't get good position on the glass and doesn't pull down as many rebounds as he should be. This should be a guy averaging 8 to 10 rebounds per game, um, even if he was playing 25 minutes. Like, He's got the leaping ability, the strength, the motor to be able to get that amount of rebounds. This should be He should be an elite rebounder. Now, if he can fix the positioning, I think that's one thing that will be fixed automatically. Um, hit, again, the fouls are a huge problem. That's a huge cause of his um, inability to stay, like I said, inability to stay patient and um, just play, play his role, wait for his opportunity to get the ball instead of always trying to go for a strip or a steal or a block or um, just, like I said, welcome any kind of contact. Um, Again, he's got he's got the ability to be a good shot blocking four. He did bring, like I said, bring down a pretty impressive amount of steals per game. Um, like I said, averaged almost two steals per game or per forty minutes. Averaged almost three, actually, I think it was above three blocks per forty minutes. So, again, something that you think will come along, um, but with a guy as raw as Chris, he is only a fresh or he was only a freshman. Didn't play. Didn't play an extraordinary amount of minutes, so he didn't get a whole lot of exposure. But, um, yeah, he, again, something that should be able to come along with time. So, third weakness is he's still raw on offense. He has the ability to be a great offensive player. Like I said, his upside on offense is very high. Now, you got to take a few things into account. The three-point shooting, while it was there, it was inconsistent. Um, his post-up game is good, but it's also a pretty moderate uh, set of moves that he has in his arsenal. And he could use a, a little bit of improvement from the free throw line. 68% good, not great. Um, again, so I ho hope, he could get, or ho hope that he could get up around 72-75% considering he gets to, gets to the line almost seven times per 40 minutes. Um, there's a few other things too. The, one of the biggest is his uh, facilitating ability. Um, he averaged two turnovers to only 0.8 assists per game. Again, not a ratio you look for. Um, he's not much of a facilitator, which you want out of, which is a big thing to want out of your bigs nowadays in the NBA. Um, I think that that could come along just with um, his improvement and confidence of uh, passing. While dry, or passing off the drive, like I said, drive and kick, that sort of thing, or just being a little bit more aware uh, while he has the ball. Again, it's kind of a freshman thing to just get tunnel vision, um, be very focused on the drive, and, um, sorry about that. Um, but anyway. Sorry about that, got cut off there, but anyway. Um, Talking about his raw skill set on offense, like I said, if the passing can get touched up a little bit and then um, inconsistencies from outside shooting are probably the two biggest ones. Uh, he's a little bit out of control sometimes on offense. But anyway, get into um, his NBA draft projections, um, best fits, sap projections, things like that. So he is normally projected as a lottery pick um, I actually didn't I don't think I had him ranked in my big board series so um, I never had the opportunity to rank him out but uh, the last NBA draft.net mock draft had him going at number 10 to the Milwaukee Bucks excuse me and a few things I'm reading up on now uh, looks like he actually measures at about 235 now maybe even 610 with shoes so, and obviously that's the way most people are measured. So, um, yeah, a little bit of an increase there. But anyway, I think, again, he fits in as a late lottery pick. I think he would fit in best with any team um, that needs a little bit of a phys physical presence down low. Um, I'm not going to compare. The comparison's not fully there, but I do like the comparison to Serge Ibaka. Um, they are similar players, both shot blockers, uh, both very athletic. Um, they can also play that the, are also stretch fours and both can post up and, like I said, have that presence of outside shooting. Um, 
But when you're talking about best fits, I think one you got to look at. I don't. I don't like the Milwaukee fit. I think one you got to look at is Toronto. They are in desperate need of a physical or of a little bit more of a physicality presence down low. Jonas Valanciunas seems like he's coming along all right, but I think they need someone besides Patrick Patterson to be able to handle that spot. Um, a few other fits that I would like. Um, one is the New Orleans Pelicans. I don't think he would fall at six. Again, the draft order isn't set yet, but um, the actually the lottery is coming up, I believe, Tuesday. So uh, that'll be a big thing to see after that. And then. Um, also, my last fit is the Chicago Bulls. I think the Bulls have a lot of needs, but um, again, for a four, I think I think I think the uh, I think the Bulls have a huge need at the four, and a guy like Marquise Chris, uh, like I said, fits the four spot extremely well in today's NBA. All right, so he's extremely hard to project stats wise when it comes to the NBA. I think you're looking at, at a guy that can come in and start like day one. Again, most lottery picks, you would expect that at least maybe be a sixth or seventh man in the rotation. Um, I'd say either start or six starting role or six man is where he's gonna be at. That's just where I feel like he's gonna be at. Um, he is raw, but he's not as raw as say uh, Deontay Davis, who is a similar uh, similar situation in the draft or a Dragon Bender. Uh, not really a similar situation, but another power four that will probably be going in the lottery. So. Again, 10 and 5, I think would be a fair average, probably 10, 5, and 1, maybe 10, 5, and 2 when you're talking about assists at the very end of that stat line. Now, again, that depends on his minutes. Um, if he can stay out of foul trouble, those are two big things when he gets into the NBA as well. Um, I think he could shoot. Uh, for me, it sounds like he's going to be around a 30, 34, 35% three point shooter in the NBA, uh, maybe 33. I think. I don't think the three-point percentage is going to stay as high, uh, but I think the field goal percentage will stay around 49 to 52%. Um, so, again, I, th I think you could see that translate extremely well to the NBA uh, when you're talking about field goal percentage. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, to, later today, I should be coming back with, I believe it is, oh, man, the name slipped in my mind right now, Diamond Stone. Um, and then only got a few more mock, dra or mock drafts, uh, scouting reports left to do. I am doing 30 total, and I believe this one puts me at 27. So getting close to the end there, and then I'll be doing a mock draft at the very end of that. Uh, probably come, I'll, I'll probably try to do that right after the draft lottery is announced. Uh, just be good timing for that since at least half of the draft order will be set. Actually, a little bit more than that. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, if you have not seen... Uh, I believe my last one was Malachi Richardson. The link to that will be in the outro, and the link to the entire playlist will be in the description below. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, Malachi Richardson. So he is a six foot six, two hundred ten pound shooting guard. Plays a little bit of small forward too, but mainly a shooting guard. Uh, freshman out of Syracuse University from Hamilton Township, New Jersey, and he has a six foot eleven wingspan. So get it.